I'm Alex Dryden. I'm the Visiting Research Programmer for Scholarly Communication and Publishing at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I work primarily on the digital publishing systems used by the Illinois Open Publishing Network. And I'm joined today by Dan Tracy, the head of Scholarly Communication and Publishing, and will both be available to answer questions during the Q&A period. This presentation will focus on how we implemented Omeka S as a publishing platform for the press, uh, the kinds of challenges that we faced and how we address them by developing a software module for Omeka S that we named Teams. I'll go over some of the design interfaces, uh, the ways that we can configure Teams and talk about the ongoing development with the module. First, I'll give you a little bit of context about uh, the press and how we're using um, our publishing platforms. So iOpen, the Illinois Open Publishing Network, is a library-based press that focuses primarily on multimedia-rich digital publications. Uh, we have three imprints, two of which focus on long-form publications. Those are Publishing Without Walls and Windsor and Downs. We also publish journals uh, through iOpen Journals. Uh, we use three platforms for these long form publications, Pressbooks, Scalar, and Omeka S. So Pressbooks is for the more conventional kinds of publications, uh, basically linear books with multimedia elements. And then we use Scalar or Omeka S where there's a need for something outside of that scope, uh, like a non-linear presentation, or in this case, um, a curated exhibit. So Omeka is, is really great for that digital storytelling cur um, uh, um, curation of exhibits, uh, but it wasn't really designed with a press in mind. So there are some features on the back end that um, really become problematic. So like I say, we primarily use Omeka S for curated exhibits um, that present and contextualize digital objects alongside academic essays. Um, this can either complement a more traditional monograph or it can be its own standalone publication. Here, um, I have a screenshot of an example work in progress that uses that former approach. From a production standpoint, Omeka S has a really big appeal because it allows us to host multiple independent sites from a single inst installation so we don't have to stand up independent instances of Omeka uh, for each new publication that wants to use the platform. So this is a view of the admin landing page, and I've highlighted the section of the interface where admins can manage those separate sites, which, which appear to the public as separate contained um, publications. In our case, this would represent separate publications. Uh, however, while the front end design shows the public separate sites, authors building those sites see everything that is managed by Omeka S in a single view. Uh, so now I've highlighted the resources Omeka manages, and you can see here those 721 objects. Those are all the resources used by any of the sites. Uh, now, to give you an idea of how that might become problematic, Here's a view of the items index page where authors would go to look through their digital um, objects and you know, edit them or, or anything. Uh, an author working on their project will see all of their own items uh, intermingled alongside all of the other objects used by any of the other Omeka S sites. This presents a, a user experience problem as authors are gonna have to wade through tons of irrelevant content but it also presents a danger that an author may accidentally delete or modify someone else's content. So here uh, I'm logged in um, on the official Omeka S sandbox, and you can see that um, with the credentials they provide, I can modify or delete any of this content. And as the catalog grows, this interface will become increasingly unwieldy. So the concern, our security concern um, is aggravated uh, by the relatively limited number of roles that Omeka offers. So the role you assign to a user determines the kinds of permissions they have on the back end, what they can create or delete or modify. In order to give a user enough permissions to build sites, 
you have to also give them permissions to modify or delete objects, even ones they don't own. So uh, we developed the Teams module to mitigate these risks and improve the overall user experience uh, for authors. The module functions by creating contexts in the back end that we call Teams, uh, in which users, uh, their resources, and sites are all associated with a particular project or team. In the most basic configuration, a single author, their digital objects, and their site will make up a team. Uh, so the team a user belongs to then functions as a filter on the back end. So Omeka will only show them uh, the things that are associated with their project and prevent them from modifying anything that's outside of the scope of that project. Teams also allows admins to create their own custom team roles by selecting which specific actions that role should be able to perform. Here I'm showing the form that admins fill out to create a new role where they can select the specific tasks that that, that role should perform. To illustrate this filtering effect, I'll show you a view of the Omeka interface with the, the Teams module installed. I've circled a new element here on the left. Um, it's the user's current team, and it defines the project they're currently working on. So if they create a new resource, it'll automatically be assigned to the green team. And for every view throughout the admin interface, they will only ever see resources associated with that team. For users who belong to more than one team, they always have the option to select a different team. Uh, and then the available resources and their permissions will automatically be updated for that new context. Here we see the uh, user is working in the green team and all the objects are related to the color green. To give you an example of how teams and team roles interact, I'll walk through an example of creating a graduate assistant role for an author who has hired um, a graduate student to add items and correct metadata in the items that the author has already added themselves. So here is that form where admins create new roles. And we have a grad student here, and we've described the role. And we want to allow them to add resources to the team and modify resources uh, that the authors already made. And we'll give them the ability to delete resources as well. So now we will create that new role. We'll go into our users. I already have one set up as a, a non-admin user. And we'll go ahead and edit them. And we are going to give them the role of grad student that we just made in the green team. So now I'll switch to another window where I'm logged in as this non-admin grad student user. Okay, so now I'm logged in as the non-admin grad student. You can see there in the green team, they see green items. They have the ability to modify, delete, or view them, or add new items. And if they add a new item, the team uh, that it belongs to is automatically populated. But because we didn't want them to be able to modify the site, they don't have any of those um, edit or delete options for the site. So that should give you an idea of how we use the teams and team roles to support various workflows that authors may need. Well, the most uh, common team configuration is probably going to be a, a single author um, who has exclusive access to the resources that are going into their site and a single site. Um, we made the module more flexible to accommodate other types of collaborations or other kinds of configurations. Uh, the first kind uh, we envisioned is the one that we just talked through, 
uh, where there are multiple users working on a single site, either because someone has enlisted a helper or there are multiple authors. Um, the next one is uh, a single author belonging to multiple teams. Um, this would help you support an author um, who is creating more than one publication um, with the press uh, without having to generate separate login credentials within Omeka. Uh, these two configurations are probably somewhat less common, uh, but we thought they were still worth designing towards. The first one is an item which is used by multiple teams. Because this is the native way that Omeka works, we felt that was uh, an important workflow to uh, preserve. And the final one you see here uh, involves multiple teams contributing to a single site. So for larger interdisciplinary projects, this configuration might help keep uh, items belonging to different disciplines organized into their respective teams before being combined into one collaborative site. We're currently using the module in production, but there are open issues and in, in further development work that we still need to address. Primarily, the next major piece of work involves integrating teams with other popular modules, uh, like the CSV import module that allows um, authors to, to batch import items. Another ongoing concern is making sure that the conceptual design of the module remains compatible with improvements made by Omeka. Since we started development in 2019, Omeka has incorporated a number of features that we had initially addressed with teams. So it's really a process of making sure that we're not, um, not doing work in the module that Omeka is now doing themselves. Uh, and finally, we're continuing to integrate feedback from our users to, to improve the usability of the module. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, you can download the module from GitHub at the link there. Uh, or if you'd like to try it out in our sandbox, just drop us a line at the email on the slide, and we'd be happy to get you set up with an account and a team in our sandbox. Thanks.